you say so, I will let down the net. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. And they had brought their boats to the shore. They left everything and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing him, page 344, verses 1 and 2. Lord, you have come to the lake shore. Jesus gets into the boat belonging to Simon Peter, 
and asked him to row out a little way so he could teach the crowd that was along the shoreline. When Jesus is finished, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. I imagine at this point, Simon is exhausted. He's been awake all night. He has caught no fish. He has already cleaned his nets. And now this carpenter Jesus, who knows nothing about fishing, wants him to put out his nets. At this point, I can see Jesus looking at Peter, saying with his eyes, take a chance on me. Peter takes a chance on Jesus, and he is rewarded with a huge catch of fish. He actually needs a second boat to help him bring in the catch of fish. Even with a second boat, we're told that the boats are so full that they might sink. And we know from the text that they are no longer in shallow water, but they are in deep water. And if they were to sink in deep water, this would be a dangerous thing. This passage, though, is about more than shallow or deep water. It's about us and our spiritual lives. Shallow waters are the safe places in our lives. Places where we can put our feet on the ground, our head is above the water, we can see the bottom of the lake, and we can see what is swimming in the water with us. We know the rules. In deep water, we can't feel the bottom of a lake. We must work hard to stay afloat. We can't see what's in the water with us. Deep water is dark water. And I think Peter senses that Jesus is pulling him into deep water when he says, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. Lent is just a few weeks away. And we know that Peter will be dragged to places he does not want to go, into deep water. He will deny Jesus. He will go into hiding during the crucifixion. So where are you in your spiritual journey? Are you in shallow water? Your faith feels comfortable. Or do you feel like you are being pulled into deep water? Some things can make us feel like we're in deep water. For moving into a new home, illness, death of a loved one, family concerns, worries about the chaos in the world. These are normal parts of life, and eventually we will find ourselves back in shallow water. Jesus calls us also into deep water for our faith. He asks us, take a chance on me. He calls us to go to places we may not want to go. Steve Gardner's home to United Methodist pastor has written a wonderful devotion on this passage where he reads part of the scripture and then he asks questions. So Barbara's going to read the scripture. I'm going to ask the questions. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. Wait, I'm in a different place than you, Barbara. <laughs> Last minute. <laughs> Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God. Is there a hunger in you that presses to hear the word of life? Give it permission. 
let it move you. He saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. How might God be asking you to make use of your life? In all your challenges, give thanks that the beloved is in the boat with you. When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Do you hear God inviting you into deep water? Where are those deep waters? Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Where do you experience discouragement, weariness, emptiness? Imagine Jesus there. Imagine grace hidden there. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. Have you done, ever done anything purely because God asked you to? Are you willing to? What might God be asking you to do? When they had done this, they caught a great many fish. Imagine that you were to receive what you long for. Imagine it is already there beneath your vision. They caught so many fish, their nets were beginning to break. Are there ways your success weighs you down? Do your possessions swamp you? So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. You are not in this alone. Who is with you? And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. God's abundant grace can ruin your old life. Let it be so. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Do the abundant riches of God's grace leave you feeling unworthy? Get up. Do you sense the gap between God's grace and your living? Rather than reject the grace, conform to it. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. This is not your work, but the work of God in you. You are not the fisher, you are the bait. Imagine what God can do through you. When they had brought their boats to shore, they let every, left everything and followed him. What do you need to let go of? Remember, you are not being sent off. You are being invited to follow, to stay close. Here ends the reading. Um, I've made a copy of this, and if you're interested in reading this later and thinking about these things, there are some copies on your way out. Um, I've adapted Abba's song so we can hear it as an invitation from Jesus. If you change your mind, I'm first in line. Beloved, I am still free. Take a chance on me. If you need me, let me know. Gonna be around. If you've got no place to go, if you're feeling down, if you're all alone, when the pretty birds have flown, beloved, I'm still free. Take a chance on me. Gonna do my very best, Christian, can't you see? Gotta put to the test. Take a chance on me. Take a chance, take a chance, take a chance on me. Amen. Let us pray. You call us wanderer of the seashores and sidewalks, inviting us to sail out of our smug harbors into the uncharted waters of faith to wander off from our unpredictable paths to follow you, 
into the unpredictable footsteps of the kingdom to leave the comfort of our homes and accompany you into uncomfortable neighborhoods we usually avoid. We pray for those who feel like they are in deep water and are sinking. Please be with those on our prayer list, those suffering from natural and unnatural disasters, those who are longing for bread to eat and clean water to drink, those who live in fear of war, fear of being a victim of random acts of violence, such as those two officers killed at a Virginia college, and the black colleges that were on lockdown this past week due to threats of bombs, and those who live in circumstances we can't imagine. May we enter deep waters if you can use us to alleviate the suffering of your creation. As we wait in our simple, sometimes crazy, constantly uncertain life, speak to us, Spirit of grace, of that hope which is our anchor, of that peace which is our rock, of that grace which is our refuge. Amen.